Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stopping smoking. So please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Please get yourself comfortable sitting in a comfortable chair or lying down. Allow yourself a little bit of time where you're not going to be disturbed, hopefully, but it doesn't matter if you're disturbed, you're disturbed. If you've got kids and they need your attention, you can just press pause, deal with that, and then just come back when you're ready. It's okay. This isn't a sleep recording. You know, don't need to be like super duper relaxed and unconscious or anything like that of course you'll feel relaxed because it's relaxing I mean I I personally I find it relaxing just closing my eyes and listening to something whether it's music or whether it's a lecture or it's a talk or an audio book uh, on Audible, or I listen to audiobooks on YouTube as well. So I find that relaxing. I think it. I mean, I think the uh, the act of actually closing your eyes for for however long, you know, just you know, closing your eyes and and not needing to open your eyes for anything not needing to do anything is in itself relaxing now this recording we're focusing on stopping smoking so this is one of a few that I've made and I will continue to make new recordings on this subject because there's so many ways to look at things and there's so many ideas out there and sometimes it's nice to hear different words to hear something fresh and sometimes Hearing something for the first time, it may be the exact same thing that you've heard before, but hearing it from a different voice, or maybe uh, hearing it instead of reading it, or perhaps just hearing it at the right time can have a very beneficial effect. And there may be background sounds where I am. You know, it's the summer here, it's in the afternoon. You know, there's people come and go from the building. The gate gets opened, it's windy outside today. So, but that's okay. Even if you've got a dog barking in the background where you are. It doesn't matter because this isn't sleep. You may fall asleep through boredom possibly I don't know but I think it's it's important to point out that whatever the situation you're in is fine as long as you can safely close your eyes and even if your mind does get distracted by thoughts The words I'm saying are still entering into your unconscious mind. And it's all around moving forward as a non-smoker. Now, I don't generally these days try and make a recording where... Um, to put pressure on people, you know, 
when this recording's finished, you'll be a non-smoker. Meh, meh, meh. I have done recordings like that. And I probably will do some in the future. But this isn't one of those. This really is... I, I like the idea, okay, of offering some suggestions. Offering some thoughts and ideas which you can maybe come back to and sometimes maybe something that I've said to you will replay in your mind so you might listen to this now and you may be listening at I don't know 12 in the afternoon and then at 10 o'clock tonight a certain phrase or a sentence or Something like that might come back to you and like, oh, okay. Especially when you think about something that you don't like doing. And you may wonder, why is that? Because that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk and I'm going to ask you some questions. And I know you can't actually answer me. So in a way so that I can hear you because this is a recording but I'm going to ask you some questions about what you wouldn't do and I'm not talking about anything heavy or extremely serious or crime or anything like that although you can go that way if you want in your mind it's up to you I want you to think of one thing now that you just wouldn't do off the top of your head. Now, for me, jumping out of a plane with a parachute, obviously, but jumping out of a plane wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Not go- It's not going to happen. Or sticking my head in a crocodile's mouth. Now... Th- that hopefully everyone in the world would agree with that, you know. But I've been on YouTube and some people do do that stuff, which is uh, beyond my my understanding why someone would. But I would never do that. So you know your your thing may not have may not be as extreme as putting your hat yeah your head or your hand or your arm or your leg in a a crocodile's mouth. But there's something that you just wouldn't do. I'd like you to think of that. But not just think of it, but I'd like you to get in touch with the idea of doing it. I don't just come out of that feeling. Just notice what that feeling feels like. Now I want you to focus on how you feel about smoking. How you feel about, uh, you know, sucking on that cigarette or that. Maybe it's a pipe or cigar or roll up tobacco, whatever. How you feel about when you think about smoking. How do you feel? Now think of that other thing again. Really get in touch with how you feel physically when you think of, for example, jumping out of a plane. How you physically feel. The idea of it. And I'm, you know, I'm asking for you to think of something that you would never do. Like, as a no. As a no. Not even, not even questioning it. You know, it's almost like, why are you asking such a stupid question? Of course I wouldn't do that. Building that emotion up. Now thinking of the cigarettes again. Thinking of smoking. Imagine yourself smoking. And now, I'm going to offer you money. I'm not not going to give you any money, but... If someone offered you a lot of money to do that thing that you would never do, 
would you do it then? Now, if you would, I want you to think of something different. I want you to think of something that you wouldn't do, even for all the money in the world. Like you just couldn't physically do it. And maybe you feel physically sick at the idea of doing it. Um, Emotionally, it's kind of upsetting, the idea of doing it. It's like, no, nothing would uh, persuade you. No one could, and not even all the money in the world would persuade you to do this particular thing. Now, you know, I think, and I'm going to go extreme here, so if you don't like extreme, then switch it off, but eating someone else's vomit, couldn't do it, couldn't do it, not, I mean, why why would anyone want to do it, but I'm just saying, if you're going to go to an extreme disgustingness, couldn't do that. Um, probably I'd rather jump out of a plane than do that. That's something that you could not pay me to do. It's grim, disgusting to me, just not something that I would do. But as far as fear goes, it's to jumping out of the plane. That's the thing probably that scares me because, you know, once you jump, once you jump there's nothing you can do, is there? You kind of held hostage to <laughs> to whatever happens next hopefully the parachute opens now think of smoking think of smoking what would it be like to smoke right now Now I'd like to gain, think of something that you, that's even worse than the one you've already thought of. Something that's even more like a no-no. So I'm trying to think of something worse than jumping out of a plane or, I don't even want to say it out loud, but the other thing that I said, eating vomit, Ugh. Oh, thinking of smoking after that. Mm. I mean, would you... Or eating dog's dogs poo. I mean, if you saw a cigarette with its tip inside some dog's excrement on the floor, would you pull a cigarette out and smoke it? Ugh, can you imagine if every cigarette had that on? Wow. I mean, you could go in different ways. Imagine if the people actually producing the cigarettes have touched them, have got COVID, and that COVID's on those cigarettes. Ugh. But yeah, it's... Imagine something else equally or worse. A worse thing that is just beyond something you could ever do. So, you know, this is, we're going, we're looking at extreme things. So, you know, it might not be pleasant, but it's okay. Because there are worse things, you know, out there. And there's worse things ahead potentially for people that keep smoking than jumping out of a plane or eating dog's poo. Things way worse than that, health-wise. But, you know, I'm not going to focus on, you know, the the obvious medical issues connected to smoking. I mean, it's weird. I've got a friend who's got, um, what has he got? Not emphysema. Um, what's that thing where your lungs are just, it's basically dying. Um, he's not got lung cancer, but he's got a lung, uh, 
forget what they call it. But it's it's basically his lungs are just completely buggered and messed up. And he'll, he'll eventually end up on oxygen. And he's only a young man. He's younger than me. I'm not old. No, I'm not. And, you know, that's been caused by smoking and stuff like that. It's, well, it's definitely not helped. And even though it's, you know, I saw him get... He had COVID and he also, uh, last year and he also had um, not a cold, not flu, but the other one, the really bad one, which, and, you know, was, I remember the paramedics were here and he was on oxygen. And it was weird because I see him coughing a lot and he's constantly bringing up gunk from his chest, from his lungs and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm used to seeing that. And he still smokes and, you know, he, I think he's kind of given up, to be fair. And that's his choice. You know, he's, he chooses what he chooses. But I remember seeing, seeing him with an oxygen mask on. Uh, when he had, um, well, twice actually, I've seen that. And he had the paramedics there with him and he had oxygen mask on and because he, he couldn't breathe. And I remember coming up here and just crying, which is unlike me. I don't usually cry, generally. And it was so upsetting. But because he's my friend, he won't listen to anything I say. And I have to accept that. You know, to stop smoking, you need to decide to do it and stick to it and for whatever the reason you, you're stopping just do it for yourself I mean you may have a small child and you don't want them to see you get ill and die uh, so you're thinking well you don't want to put them through that because it's going to affect them for the rest of their life so from that angle, you could say, well, I'm going to stop smoking for my daughter or for my son or for my wife or husband or for someone else, or boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe parents even. Someone that you're very close to and maybe you've seen someone get ill and, you know, gradually go downhill and die and because um, they've all been affected. There's no one really in the world that hasn't been affected by um, you know, cancer. Let's. I don't like saying a word, if I'm honest. But you know, everyone we've all been affected by it, either personally or someone else that's you know passed away. I've lost a few people over the years, uh, family, and that have died. So we've all been affected by it. So it's not one of those things that we're not affected by. So we know what it's like. Most people know what it's like to, even if it's a distant person, maybe it's someone you've worked with and seeing them being all healthy. And then, you know, six months later, they can hardly walk or breathe, you know. So it's... I remember there was this bloke I worked with years ago and he was such a happy cheeky chappy but always had a cigarette in his mouth like all the time just constantly and then he was off work and I'm like well where's he gone then where's Harry I don't know if his name is Harry but that's what I called him and that would explain why he never used to turn around when I shouted his name and he turned up uh, probably about four five months four months later and he was probably half his body weight and that was it. And then a couple of months later, he was gone. And I was like, wow. And I was I was in my early 20s at the time. I didn't know him very well, but it was like, wow, this is... Ugh. But I didn't know anything about hypnosis or I didn't know anything about... I didn't care back then about my own health, really. Wasn't that concerned. Um, but
Yeah, it's it does. Even now, I think back to it, and it's it's almost more upsetting now than it was then. Because I think back and like, well, I didn't learn anything from that. Because I was smoking, I was still smoking after that. It didn't stop me. But, you know, some people say, well, you should only stop for yourself. Which I can understand. It does make sense. You know, if someone's nagging you to stop, if it's your partner or your parents or children or whatever, and they're moaning at you saying, you've got to stop. It can be a bit annoying. And sometimes, well, it can be more than annoying. And a human, a natural human reaction is to kind of go the other way is to push against that because you know most people don't like to be controlled i would say but when you step back and look at the situation and maybe you know you do have children and it don't have to be young children if if the child is 5 or 50 they're still going to be hugely affected emotionally traumatized in fact by seeing their parent pass away be ill and die it's there's no you know it's not easier as you get older i don't think it's there's a logic of like oh okay well i kind of understand a bit more about life and i understand this is what happens and we all die blah 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 But actually, when it happens, it makes no difference. Because oh, when I see my dad, I basically become a child again. Almost, I feel like I'm I'm like 10. Even though he's 76 and I'm 52. Or he's 77, something like that. But, you know, it's almost like... Which is weird. I'm actually 51. I don't even, even know my own age. So whatever whatever reason you're deciding to stop, here's another question. Like, if you've got in your mind, I'm going to stop. If someone offered you a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds to smoke a cigarette, would you? Or to keep smoking? Not to just smoke one, but to keep smoking for another week. Would you take the money? And and they gave you the cigarettes and the tobacco or whatever. You didn't have to buy it. They just gave it to you and gave you a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds or a thousand euros, whatever. Would you do it? Now, some people might say, well, yeah, because it makes no difference. Just another week. Well, I think week is the right word. It means that you're not being serious. I don't mean to be harsh, but the one thing you need to be when you stop smoking is serious about it. And I don't mean serious in life, you know, you, you've got to keep hold of your sense of humour at all costs. Never let your sense of humour go. It's the thing that can keep you alive. But stop smoking has to be a serious thing. It, it really needs to be that thing that you're not going to do. No matter what, like you won't do it. Just like you wouldn't pick up that horse manure on the on the pavement and uh, rub it into your grandmother's hair. You just wouldn't do that. I mean, if you would do that, and there's something wrong with you. So, you know, please stop listening and go and get help. <laughs> There's certain things we wouldn't do. Now, I've given a few a few ideas and options for that. But there's things that you would never, ever do. In a million years, you would never do it. I'm not going to know what that is. This needs to be in the same place as that. This needs to be as serious as that. Something that you would never do. 
never do again. Now, some people listen to this. If I say probably a lot of people listen to this have done things that they regret from the past. I have myself. I've done things I would never do again. And I'm not talking about anything illegal or, you know, serious criminal act. I'm just talking about something that, no, I wouldn't do that again. That's just something that I would not do. I did it when I was younger, maybe, and it was it was the wrong thing to do. And it doesn't fit my morals now. It doesn't fit who I am now. Yeah, maybe some things I did at school. I was a bit naughty sometimes. So, you can look down that road. You can look like down that little alleyway of memories. Of like, no. I would never do that again. Nothing could make me do that again. And also sometimes, I think, you know, in life, I've done things I didn't know were going to cause problems and did. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Or even a sentence, maybe I've said something. I realised, uh, oh, sh- shouldn't say that. So there's probably quite a few things that you would never do again. There's probably quite a few things that you would never do in the first place that you just wouldn't. It's not even that you wouldn't do it. You can't do it. Nothing could make you do it. Like, you know, there's a there's a line. We all have a line. A line in the sand, as it were, of what we what we won't do. We won't go beyond a certain point. And I know maybe we can be pushed sometimes in extreme situations. But even then there's some things that you could not, I couldn't do. I couldn't, you know. And I'm going to, I mean, I couldn't push an old person in the road, in front of a lorry. Why, I mean, that's an extreme thing, I know. It's extreme. I couldn't do it. It doesn't matter what, even if I was handed a pardon by the, you know, by the the Queen, saying, it's okay, you can do that, and here's a billion dollars, and it's fine, and you, you, it makes no difference. I couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I could never do something like that. There's someone pointing a gun at my head and you have to do that. No, couldn't do it. I just couldn't. It's not something, you know. So it's a finding the things that you could never do. Now, I know that some of the things I've mentioned have been pretty gross. And it kind of supposed to be. That's the point. And I'm not comparing smoking a cigarette to pushing some old lady in front of a bus or a tr- you know it's like of course they're not they're not cons- that you know that's a dumb way of looking at it. Of course it's not. That's and if you you can see that that's not where I'm going with that. I'm not comparing those two things. But when you have that in the same place in your mind of something that you would never do. Because remember, lots of people will happily stroke a snake and hold a snake. And lots and lots of people would never, ever, I mean ever touch a snake. Not for money not even to save their own life, would not be able to physically go anywhere near a snake or a spider or something like that, yeah? That's not a choice. And, you know, having a snake wrapped around your neck and stroking it, 
is nothing like smoking a cigarette. Obviously, it's not. But when it's in the same place, when it's connected to that snake, when you think about cigarettes and you have that same feeling of something that you would never do, like touch a snake or hold a spider in your hand, or get into a bar full of eels, or bungee jump, I would never bungee jump. I couldn't, I couldn't do it, I couldn't physically do it, I'd have to be pushed off, I couldn't physically do that, I've got issue with heights, you know, uh, for a, a pretty good reason, but I'm just not, it's just not something I could do, and you could say, oh well you can hypnotise yourself to do it, why? I probably, maybe I could hypnotise myself to bungee jump, but what possible benefit is that to me what about jumping out of a plane with a parachute why would anyone do that it seems like the most ridiculous thing in the world to do it's like swimming with sharks why would you swim with a shark (laughs) i know it's each person's you know choice of course do what you want but there's no benefit to my life to do something like that you're just tempting fate you, you, t- you know, it makes no sense. Like people who put their arms in crocodiles' mouths, and people do do that for some reason. You know, on some of these uh, crocodile farms and stuff in other countries, there's videos on YouTube of people doing it. Some someone put their whole head inside of crocodiles. I was watching it today. Why? Why would I hypnotise myself to be able to do that? No benefit at all. You know, for me, hypnosis is about... It's about an idea. It's about wrapping your your mind around an idea. Thinking. Focusing. And it's... doesn't see any point trying to get myself to do something that I don't want to do that's why for people that do want to smoke well just smoke there's no point if it's something you want to do and you've got no intention of stopping if that's the mindset then don't waste your time listening to this do other, do something else you, you know this is no point but if you want to stop and you want to move on. And you want something that keeps coming back into your mind. A feeling. That feeling connected to smoking that wasn't there before. I don't know, I'm not talking about the feeling of lying on your deathbed choking, not being able to breathe, or anything like that. And basically, uh, drowning in your own lungs I don't mean that because thinking of that of course that's going to stop you from wanting to smoke isn't it if every time you pulled a cigarette out or looked at a cigarette box or thought about smoking you just imagine yourself lying in a hospital bed drowning in your own lungs you know drowning like not being able to yeah of course that's gonna it's not going to be a positive feeling is it but I don't, I'm not going down that road I'm just trying to uh Focus on some things that you wouldn't never do. Something, as I said, like right jumping out of a plane or holding a spider in your hand. I wouldn't want to do that either. Again, I don't see any point in wanting to do stuff like that. Although, to be fair, I did stroke my friend's snake the other day not a euphemism he actually does have a snake he's got two and it's it's okay but I've I've been going into his his home and that snake's been there for 
four years or three years in a in a tank so i'm used to it being there if that makes sense it's it's taken a few years of getting used to it there and i know that it's not dangerous and it can't hurt me but i wouldn't i wouldn't put it around my neck and i, I couldn't hold it i stroked it and that was it i let it go on part of my arm and it did it wasn't enjoyable but it's like okay so you know i could change the way i feel about holding a snake but some people like think well it's good because you can get rid of your fears and the less fears we have the more open we can be to doing new things and i do understand it from that perspective but it's good to have fear as well it's good to be scared of certain things and that's what has kept us alive as a species if we had no fear right from the beginning we wouldn't hit our the human race would have just burnt out thousands of years ago you know the first time a, a wild animal started running at us and we just stood there like oh look a big bear he's cuddly he's like Paddington and then suddenly you've been eaten so like okay that can only happen so many times before the you know the race just gets wiped out so having fear is can be quite a healthy thing irrational fears you know maybe not so much I mean I don't personally class being scared of uh, dangerous animals as being irrational to a degree I mean there's no point in me being scared of a crocodile if I live in England and there are no crocodiles here apart from in the zoo there's no alligators we don't have really poisonous animals we don't have tigers or any of those kinds of things so it's it's a relatively safe place when it comes to animals so I don't need to have that fear so it's an irrational fear if I have it but if you live in a place that has scorpions running around or snakes pythons then having a fear of that that python is it's not irrational it's real it's a it's a good reason just like i'm not saying have a fear of smoking not some being scared of getting ill and you know drowning in your own you know lungs and that i mean i'm not saying be scared of that or be scared of watching your children's faces as you're passing away seeing how they're suffering i'm not it's like i suppose you could have a phobia of that that's quite a healthy fear i suppose isn't it if it keeps you alive for a lot longer and allows you to get healthy so that you can see your children grow up or see your grandchildren grow up or see your grandchildren be born even i mean i don't know it depends how old you are you might not have grandchildren you might just want to be healthy maybe feel fitter feel how happier feel healthier be able to do more physical stuff I imagine some people want to stop smoking for the money because, yes, in England, it's very expensive to smoke. A packet of cigarettes is like 20, over 20 pound, which is a lot of money in, for, for just 20 cigarettes. And in Thailand, you can pretty much get 10 packets for the same price. So, you know, I know in some countries, um, saving money is not an issue. It's, it's not a motivation because, well, it's cheap anyway. So depending on where you are, will possibly have an effect on what your motivation is to wish to be healthier, to be able to breathe easier which happens so quickly 
is so quick after. I mean, it's weird because once you do stop, even after like a day or so, there's a certain energy that comes into your body. You kind of almost feel stronger, physically stronger. And your lungs do start to clean themselves. And it's weird. It's like so quick, those changes start to feel different, start to feel healthier very quickly. But ultimately, it has to be a decision. What decisions have you made in the past that you've stuck to? I've made loads of decisions that I've not stuck to. I mean, it's ridiculous. The amount of things that I've said, I'm not going to do that again, and I end up doing it. So I didn't really mean it at the time. But what decisions? I'm trying to think of something that I, I've i stuck to, that I just, that's it. Drugs. I used to take drugs, okay? Um, and I stopped. I used to smoke weed, and this is, so I'm not, I'm not recommending smoking, anything like that at all, even though it's legalized in probably most of the world now. It's not in my country. But I stopped, and I never did it again. This is back in a long time ago, by the way. I was 29, so 1999. I stopped smoking, and I never had another joint. From that from that moment on, that was it. I stopped. And I never will. And that was a decision I made because I didn't like how I felt. I didn't like the way it made me feel anymore. And I think there's, there's a similarity in cigarettes and smoking joints. In I used to enjoy smoking joints when I was young. Again, I'm, I'm not saying this as a motivation, as a, like, like saying that drugs are good. I'm not saying that at all. It's uh, got nothing to do with me what anyone else does. And it's nothing to do with anyone else what I do. Um, but I'm just mentioning it because I used to. I used to smoke weed or marijuana or whatever. And I liked it. Obviously I liked it because I did it for quite a few years. But then I didn't like it anymore. It didn't feel the same. And I noticed that with cigarettes as well. I used to like smoking when I was younger. But it didn't take long for it not to feel the same. It's, you know, the the smoking weed took longer. But smoking cigarettes took less time. And I remember I started smoking when I was 14, I think. And not every day, you know, I had one packet of 10 and that lasted me for about a week. But I loved it. It was new, it was exciting and all that stuff. The thing is, and I was rebelling, because I knew if my dad caught me, I'd, he'd kill me probably. That's what I thought. When he did find me, he didn't. He did find me doing it and he didn't get upset, which is weird. I kind of half wish he had. And he, what it was weird though, because I was doing karate and I was doing a lot. I was very physically fit. And I noticed just after about a month of smoking that my fitness levels dropped. I was getting more out of breath. So I was still doing the karate twice a week, Tuesday, Thursday evenings. And I was only smoking a few cigarettes, a couple a day, two or three a day maybe at this point. And my fitness level had reduced dramatically. Like, I could feel it. I was getting out of breath. Um, I was on my bike. Even cycling was a bit harder. And I was I was really surprised because I was super fit. And on a couple of occasions, I didn't even turn up to karate because I couldn't be bothered. 
because uh, it's like, oh, I can't face running around. In the end, I stopped smoking. I thought, this is silly. I'd rather be fit. And that's it. I stopped until I was older. So that level of, um, I guess, harm is quicker, isn't it, with cigarettes? But we're not focusing on how harmful they are. If it doesn't, no one needs, you don't need anyone to tell you that. We've all known that. If you're over the age of 10, you know. You've known it. I mean, we've probably known it since the age of 5, but let's say 10. 10, you know, you're going to be aware that cigarettes are bad for you. So however old you are, so for the last 41 years, at least, I've known that cigarettes are harmful. So there's no excuse. It's, it's, you know, I've known it. It's not like um, I complete ignorance. But you know what? It's sometimes, I mean, I've been a bit like this myself. I rebel. If someone tells me to, I can't do something, then I want to do it. Or if they tell me to do something, I want to do the opposite. I'm not so much like that now, but I have been like that in the past. And that's why this is a bit different, because you're choosing to listen to me waffle on. You're choosing to listen to my boring voice. No one is making you do this. No one's forcing you to to press the play button and listen to me talk. Your choice. And because you're chosen, that means that basically you're 99% already decided that you're going to stop. Because if you're not going to stop, there's no point listening to this. It's a waste of time. So the fact that you've decided to listen to this means that you're serious about stopping. And there's no pressure from me. It makes no difference to me. I don't know you. We're never going to meet. I'm never going to know your situation. Unless you send me a message, sort of let me know if it was useful or not. And I've had a few people over the years tell me that they stopped smoking because of me. <laughs> I'll put them off smoking. Whenever I think of cigarettes, I just think of dog's poo. Okay. Or vomit. Eating vomit. Oh, uh, no. I won't sit there. I can't smoke a cigarette because I think of licking vomit off the off a plate. Like, no. Covered in flies. Uh, no. Mm. That is grim. It's, you know, I mean, I could go more extreme with things that you wouldn't do, things that I wouldn't do, because there's no limit to what I can say. I'll, I'll go as grim and disgusting as you can imagine. In fact, I might do more recordings where I really go disgusting. Just for the sake of it, just for the kind of getting that message across, would you do this? No, would you do this then? You wouldn't do that. Now think of smoking. In order for it to become part of this group of things, talking about it in the same way, grouping it in the same category which it is now. It's now in a category of things that you wouldn't do. Maybe it's categorised in a group of things that you find disgusting, like really gross, like sickening, in fact. Maybe not just physically, but also emotionally. I mean, imagine if you could, if we could time travel and just time travel with a camera or, you know, your mobile phone or whatever. I wonder if the time would change on the phone. 
I don't know. So let's say you can just, all you do is you time travel right to your funeral. And let's say, uh, you know, you had passed away because of a smoking related illness. You know, I hope, I hope that doesn't happen to anyone. Of course I do. Hope that that never happens to anyone listening to this. Um, and once you stop smoking, then it's the likelihood of that happening is reduced tremendously. Tremendously. In fact, I like to think that when people listen to my relaxing sessions, my other podcasts, in my own little way, I'm helping to prolong people's lives because I'm helping to relax people helping people to get to sleep, uh, which is something that can really have a huge positive effect on their mental health and physical health. So stick with me and you're going to live a long, long, happy life. That's what, that's what I like to think. So, but you, you know, you could fast forward to like a version of the universe where you kept smoking. You know, because you think there's lots of different parallel universe, different multiverses. That's a big thing in the Avenger movies and stuff at the moment. And, you know, so there's this version of the universe where from this moment on, there's the version where you stop smoking and you don't do it again. It's like because it disgusts you. Um, or it's just something that you just wouldn't do again. It's not for you anymore. Or you finish this recording and you think well I, I was going to stop anyway he's just waffled on about dog poo and vomit and jumping out of planes and spiders and he's just talked to a bunch of crap I don't know why I bothered listening to him but I'm not going to smoke anyway because I wasn't going to so you know you, whichever way you go whichever however you feel at the end of the recording and then you you move on with your life and you feel healthier quite quickly you feel mentally healthier very quickly because when you decide when you make a decision that's beneficial to your life not just to your health but also to the life of loved ones then you can feel good about that and you can continue to feel good about that every day and then there's that parallel universe you know there's so there's a, the other one where perhaps you'd you hadn't listened to this or perhaps you hadn't allowed your brain to work properly and decided to stop forever so you know and you carried on smoking and you move go forward in time to the fu- to your funeral, and then you take a picture maybe of your child, or a picture of your parents, or a picture of your wife or husband, or your best friend crying. Take a picture of someone, maybe even you know, just someone that you care about so deeply, and just see how upset they are, and take a picture of them, and then bring that back to you. And move away from that though because you're back here but you've got that picture and whenever you think about smoking you see that picture of your little daughter or your young son or you see, it doesn't matter how old they are crying I mean I, I went to my nan's funeral when I was 45 and I howled I howled like a little baby because I was so upset at losing her and it makes no difference you know that we all know that it makes no difference how old you are if you lose someone that you care about deeply that you love it doesn't matter if you're four or if you're 400 it makes no difference it's just the most awful thing so you got that picture in your mind that's now kind of you know stuck there connected to the smoking so you think about smoking you see that picture of that loved one of yours 
at your funeral. And you can just, just by looking at the facial expression, you know that there's suffering. Really suffering. And you'd never, you would, you would never want that. You'd, you'd rather you be the one that was suffering than them. Wouldn't you? I mean, I know I would. I'd rather, um, I know my nan would as well. My nan would want her to be, you know, she'd want to take that suffering away from me. Which is just natural. This is why we hug. Like my dad came and hugged me. Thought he was going to push me into the hole, but you know he didn't. But he hugged me, and he wanted to. I know he wanted to take that pain away from me, even though it's his mum that he was burying. He he put himself. He put his own feelings aside. To comfort me. I thought he'd cracked my rib though. Because he was proper. Hugged me hard. He's a big old man. He's only. He's still. He's 77. But he's so strong. Not really relevant. To what we're talking about. Is it? But. Imagine that though, every time you think about cigarettes or smoking, you have that image. But only when it comes to you smoking, not anyone else. Anyone else can do whatever the hell they want. You know, people are going to do what they want, and they will. It's what you do, it's your life. This is your life. And There's these little things that may be useful, that can be helpful. And sometimes it is just a, a case of how we think about things. And just by changing your thinking slightly, just slightly, in a very, very small way, can transform the way you feel about something. And I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we've said never again. Now, I find often that's in relationships or in a work situation. Like I'm never going to allow that to happen again. I'm never going to allow myself to be treated like that ever again. As long as I'm alive, that will never happen. Now, I've had those moments, and maybe you have too. And nothing, nothing will change your mind on that. Like nothing. In the rest, for the rest of your life, there's going to be at least one thing that's happened that you will never allow to happen again. Ever. And that's like, a, that's a certain, never. So it's kind of like having, having that thought process when you have that idea of like, this is never going to happen again, I'm never going to do that again, ever, like with a million percent certainty, there's no pain in that. There's no emotional pain in not doing it again. There's release of pain. It's almost cathartic. There's a release of stress, uh, a sense of comfort, even if that thing was horrible and, you know, I'm never going to, it's never going to happen again. I'm never going to allow that to happen again. It's a sense of comfort that comes with knowing with every atom 
of your existence that you will never do that thing again. You will never allow it to happen. There's, a, I guess, a degree of strength comes from that because you feel strong. And I could even show you, if you was here right now, I could hold, I could ask you to hold your arm up, okay, and with your, with your palm facing down, it could be your left or your right arm, I'd say dominant arm, so whatever the strongest arm, not, I don't know if your right arm is the strongest, whatever, and just hold it out and ask you to think of something um, that you do that you kind of don't want to do. Or you, you want to stop doing. So it might be, I'd like to stop drinking, I'd like to stop eating so much chocolate. Okay. And you could push down on that arm. And because it's with me, it's a wishy washy thing. It's not that important to me. I'd like to, you know, lose a few pounds, lose a bit of fat. Maybe reduce my breast size, my cup size, but you know, but you'd be able to push down. I'd be able to, if that was your arm and you and me, I'd be able to push down on your arm, on your hand, and your your arm would go down quite easily, even though you're holding it out. There wouldn't be much strength in that. But if I said to you to think of something that you'd never do again, like really seriously, never would you allow that to happen again? And I went to push your heart, your arm down. Your arm would be stiff. Your arm would be a lot stronger. I'm not saying I won't be able to push it down because you know if I put all my weight down, most arms would go down. But it would be fairly solid. And there's that means that you mean it. So right now, if you was to put your arm out. And say, and I say to you, are you going to smoke again? And you say, no. What's your arm going to feel like? Is it going to be all just floppy and I'll be able to push it down easily? And I'm not talking about putting a lot of effort and pushing, just pushing it gently. Or if I go to push, will your arm stay out straight? Because you mean it. Good question, isn't it? So I'll leave you with that. It's just uh, a few ideas. I may, I may in the title put adult content. Not adult content, but I don't think it was adult content, but it's um, something maybe or not. I mean, really, in all fairness, I've not really been swearing or anything, have I? And it's any of the ideas compared to, yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. Now, if you listen to this with music, because I do, I do four different versions, one without music... One with background music for the duration of the recording. One with five hours of music with me talking and doing um, some counting down and some affirmations and a 10 hour version of the same. So you may wish to just relax and if you listen to the five hour or 10 hour one, maybe fall asleep if you want to. It's completely up to you. You may have already fallen asleep just out of pure boredom. I don't know. You may wish to just continue to sit there or lie there listening to the music and allow the ideas to sink even deeper into your unconscious mind. Thank you for listening. Bye.